Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Now, I trust that you are feeling blessed in Jesus this morning, that your sins have been forgiven and that you are at peace with the living God. We are continuing our study in the book of Romans, and we last left off in chapter 4, verse 8, which says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. If we trust in the Lord Jesus, if we trust in the blood that he shed, if we trust in the sacrifice of his own body given for us, Sin will not be imputed to us. And because of that, we are blessed. We are happy. We take joy in the fact that we are now at peace with God because of the horrible sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. But notice verse 9. It says, does this blessedness only come upon the circumcision or the Jew or does it come upon the uncircumcision also, or the pagan, the Gentile? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Well, how was it reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Now you have to understand, for the Jewish people, circumcision was the mark that identified them as the people of God. It was the one thing that separated them from all the pagan nations around them. And so when you stripped everything away from the Jew, the one thing they stood upon was their circumcision. Yet Paul is telling us that circumcision isn't the identifying mark of the believer, that being circumcision of the flesh. But as we were told in chapter 2, verse 28, one is not a Jew, which is one outwardly by circumcision of the flesh, but he is a Jew. One is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit. That's why we're told in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, a new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh I will cut away the stony heart from your flesh, just as the foreskin is cut away in the act of circumcision, and I will give you a new heart, a tender heart, a heart of flesh, a heart where you now desire the things that I love, says the Lord, and you will hate the things that I hate. He continues in verse 11, and he says, Abraham received the sign of circumcision, which was a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised. So circumcision was a seal to the Jew. But in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 12, it says, We should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. So at the moment of our new birth, our hearts were circumcised. We were given new hearts, and because we have trusted in Christ and the sacrifice he made on our behalves, in verse 13, after we've heard the word of truth and the gospel of our salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God says within this new heart, I will place my spirit within it. And no longer is the act of circumcision in the flesh your seal of faith, but the Holy Spirit who now abides within you is your confidence in the Lord. That is your seal. Now, because the Holy Spirit resides within us and the Holy Spirit is the very spirit of the living God, he is going to cause us to want to do the things that please God and to abstain from the things that displease God. And so he's going to write the laws of God within our hearts. And the law of God is important because it keeps us within boundaries so that we don't break the law of God. If there were no law, there would be no sin. It would be like driving on a road with no speed limit, 
A police officer cannot pull you over for speeding if there is no speed limit. And that's what Paul says in verse 15. The law works wrath. It is punishment from man or from God. For where no law is, there is no transgression. But we know when we transgress the law of God because the law of God is written in our hearts. And the Spirit of God compels us to a life of holiness, to a life of obedience. That's the work that God began in us. In verse 21, Paul says, being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Now he's speaking of Abraham and the birth of Isaac. Abraham was 100 years old when he had Isaac, Sarah 90. Yet even though her womb seemed to be dead at that age, Abraham trusted God to perform what he had promised. And so too can we, friends. We can trust the Lord to continue to perform the work in us, which is essentially becoming like the person of Christ. In all of our attitudes, in all of our habits, in all of our actions, in all of our thoughts, and in all of our words. In verse 22, it was imputed to Abraham for righteousness, and so it is imputed to us for righteousness. If in verse 24, we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead and delivered for us our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now, justification is a legal term. It implies that the debt has been settled. And so the debt that we owed unto God because of our disobedience, because of our unrighteousness, has been settled through what Jesus did on our behalf. And that's where we pick up chapter 5. It says, being justified by faith, having our debt being settled because we believe in what Jesus did for us, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Just as the high priest had access into the Holy of Holies to meet with God on a very intimate basis, so too we now, because of the Lord Jesus, have the same access into the very presence of God. And this is what happened when Jesus died because in the temple, the veil was rent in two, opening the Holy of Holies for all that would come. And so we simply do not come and go at our own leisure, but we stand in the presence of God at all times. And as we are in the presence of God at all times, we know that nothing goes unseen. And that's why we have to be so very careful and alert to what is taking place around us and in us at all times. You see, when we step out into sin, oftentimes it's because we have neglected to remember the fact that we are standing in the presence of God. But if we were always mindful of the fact that we are in the presence of God, sin would be a fleeting idea because we would never bring sin into his presence. It is only when we slip away into dark places where we think no one is looking that we allow sin to have its way with us. And so Paul is reminding us in chapter 5 verse 1 that we have been justified by faith. Our debt has been reconciled before the living God. And we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. A guilty conscience is not in peace. And so the way to keep our conscience clean is simply to remain faithful unto the Lord at all times. And this is most easily done when we realize that because we have access unto this faith through the Lord Jesus Christ, it is in this grace wherein we stand. And now that we can stand confidently before him, knowing what Jesus has done for us, and that we are forgiven, our sins have been forgotten, we can rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And so friends, it is my deepest desire for you today that not only have your sins been forgiven, not only have you been justified, not only were you saved, but are you allowing the sanctifying power of God's Holy Spirit to renew you day by day, 
to empower you to live above sin day by day? Are you continually being saved by his glory, for his glory? Are you taking every thought into captivity? Are you denying your flesh? Are you taking up your cross daily? For it is only then you will receive the gift of glorification, putting away this vile body and taking on a new body that the Lord Jesus bestows upon you. Friends, stand not in what God did for you, but ask yourself the question, what is he doing for you today? Is your experience with him as fresh and vibrant today as it once was? If it is not, then you are missing something. You're missing the greatest blessing that God can bestow upon men, and that is to walk in peace with God, knowing that there is nothing in your life that inhibits your relationship with him. You see, it's common that we will talk with others and they will always refer back to what God once did for them. And although that is important, it's not enough, not for them and not for us, friends. The question is, what is God doing for us today? Is he still washing us in his blood? Are we still receiving his forgiveness? Are we still allowing his Holy Spirit to infill us, to empower us, to enable us? Are we still in constant fellowship with him? Are we still reading and studying his word? Are we still telling all who would listen of his love and grace, of his forgiveness, and of his mercy? Have we left the elementary things which once made us a follower of Jesus to move on to bigger and better things, forgetting that it is the basic elementary things that keep us in faithful, consistent fellowship with him? And that's why Jesus warns us, do not lose your first love. If you have lost your first love, go back and return to the things that created your first love that kept passion in your soul for the things of God. Because it is only there in those moments that you have peace with God. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And I'm so grateful again that you're with us, that you're sitting under the teaching of the Word of God. And I trust and pray that your life is being changed by doing so. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.